All right, how's it going y'all? Today we are back in Azu store, and this time we're gonna be going over how to set up a VPN server on your Azu store NAS. And so what a VPN server allows you to do is it allows you to securely connect back to your home's network and access resources as if you were local to the network. This means you can access applications that are not secure or hard enough to be able to be exposed to the internet securely outside of your home's network. Basically use this VPN tunnel to securely connect back and then you can access everything as if you're local, meaning that somebody would have to break through the VPN tunnel to get to these unsecured applications, and it's going to be essentially impossible for this to happen. In computer security, nothing's actually ever impossible, but there is going to be a very low probability of that ever happening. And so to do this, you are going to need to be able to do two different things, and one of them, Azu Store has set up for you already, and the other is port forwarding you are going to have to be able to open up port forwarding on your router. Otherwise, you're just not gonna be able to connect back to it outside of your network. The reason you have to do this is you've gotta be able to have these outside applications be able to send requests to your home's network. Otherwise, the VPN server will not be able to communicate with them. And so you've gotta do that. And then the second thing that Azu Store already has for you is to have a DDNS server. So most home users do not have static IP addresses, but you don't need one if you've got a DDNS server. Essentially all it is is a DNS address that's always being updated with whatever IP address your home's network has. Then if your IP address changes, your Azu store will just say, oh hey, by the way, my IP address is now this. And now anybody connecting that DNS address will just be sent to your new address. And it all happens seamlessly without you doing anything. And so we're gonna go over how to set up those two things. All right, and so now to go ahead and set this up, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and log into Azu store. And we're going to set up first that DDNS address that I was talking about earlier. So we'll go into settings and we'll just go down into manual connect. And so if you've not created a my Azu store account yet, you're going to need to go ahead and do that. And you'd have a little thing that says, hey, sign in right here. But I've already set that up. So I'm just going to go ahead and tick enable DDNS service. For DDNS provider, you're going to go down and you're going to select myazustore.com and you're going to enter your username and password and you're going to select a cloud ID. This is actually going to be the address you use to get back. So in my case, it will be spacerex.myazustore.com is the address that I will use to get back on this VPN server or if I want to open up other things, that as well. And then for WAN IP checking interval, select 30 minutes. You want this as short as possible and it's not going to matter towards your internet bandwidth, I promise. And so now all we have to do is go ahead and click apply. And so just like that, we now have this host name and we can go ahead and go into a DNS checker and check that out. So I use dnschecker.org all the time. So we're just going to say space rex my store.com. And so just like that, you should see your home's IP address here. And so that's one other thing. You wanna make sure everything's pretty secure because this does kind of point to you. Though I would not be too worried because you're having a VPN server, it is very secure and people can throw as much stuff as they want it. As long as you've got a good password on it, nobody's gonna be able to break in. All right, and so now we're done on that. So we can go back in and we're gonna go ahead and download the VPN server app under App Central. So just hit VPN and I've already got it installed. But if you haven't, just go ahead and click VPN. It'll probably pop up with a screen that says, hey, we need to open these ports. Don't say open them now. We'll go ahead and do that manually to make sure we get exactly what we want. So now we've got this VPN server right here. And so we've got three different options. Point to point, open VPN, or L2TP over IPsec. If you've got Linux devices, you're probably going to want to use open VPN. But if you're not super tech savvy, I would recommend L2TP over IPsec. It's what I use because quite frankly, everything has a built-in L2TP over IPsec VPN server and it just works really well. So I can connect with my Mac, I can connect with Windows, I can connect with my phone and it doesn't require anything too fancy. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and we're just gonna click enable. And so then under settings, we're gonna go ahead and set it up. So we're going to go into L2TP over IPsec and we're going to select the IP addresses. These are the IP addresses that clients who are connecting to the VPN server will be given. And so you need to make sure they're not on your subnet. If you don't know a ton about subnets, what we can do is we'll just set it to 10.10.10. And so that's just a subnet that's most likely not used on your network. And so it should work and not cause any issues. But if you know about subnets, just select whatever works for you. And if you don't, 
try this. If you have issues, change it to like 10.200 and it should just work. All right, and so now you've got pretty basic configurations here. Don't turn this into you up too much because remember, all the packets are actually being encrypted by this tunnel. And so you don't want too large of an MTU because it'll cause packet segmentation, which just slows everything down. Max client number five, that's fine. For DNS server, you can select either your home's DNS server if you're running one or just Google's DNS server right here. And for key, this is your pre-shared key. And unfortunately they've got it in plain text here, but we'll just call it space Rex for now. And so this is basically like the first line of defense. With a L2TP over IPsec VPN server, at least the one we're setting up here, you basically have two passwords, a pre-shared key that everybody who's connecting the server knows, and so that's kind of your first line of defense, and then the user authentication. So you first use the pre-shared key to get into the server to be able to communicate with it, and then you use the username and password of anybody on this NAS to be able to actually connect to the tunnel. And so it's kind of two different lines of defense there, and so this is one you'll have to be able to tell everybody you want to connect and so now we're just gonna go ahead and click apply. And it's gonna knock everybody off. All right, and so now that that is configured, we just need to go in and enable some accounts under privilege. So we'll just add them and we'll choose this user as being allowed. And so now this one will be able to connect to the L2TP over IPsec VPN. And you can use groups or you can just have very fine control. And so now any user who's in here will be able to use their username and password with that pre-shared key to log into the server. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click apply. And so now Will should have access. All right, and so now we just need to open up those three ports that I talked about earlier on your router. And there are two different ways you can do this. You can either use what's called universal plug and play, which I'll show here, or if that's disabled now on your router, which a lot of people do for security, so that way a malicious device doesn't start opening up ports on your router, then you can manually connect them. And to do that, you basically need to log into your router and Google how to port forward these three ports. So there are three ports you need to do, 1701, 4500, and 500. And those are the three ports you need to open up. And so the reason that there are three ports is because actually L2TP is actually encapsulated within IPsec and another one is used for authentication. So it's kind of a complex thing that's all handled by the firewall here. So we need to open up the three ports, which is 1701, 4500, and 500 and you need to open up those on your router and point them to the IP address of your ASUS store. And so I'll go ahead and show you how to do it on ASUS store automatically. So go into settings, manual connect, easy router, and you would hit activate, but I've got universal plug and play disabled, so it's not gonna work for me. And you would select edit, and you'd scroll down to app VPN server, and you're going to select these three ports right here. And click okay. And then if you had a universal plug and play router, you could click activate and it would say, hey, this will work. But we'll see right here that boom, it did not work. But if you had universal plug and play enabled, it would work. And you would just be able to hit go. And so if you don't have that, just go ahead and log into your router and open up those ports and it's really easy to use. All right, and so once you've done that, it's actually really easy to go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to connect on my desktop here. I'm within the local network, so it's gonna be a little different but this will work anywhere in the world for you. And so to connect, it's really easy to use either Windows, Mac, or a phone to really easy connect into these. And you just need to search how to connect to L2TP over IPsec VPN server and whatever brand of device you're using or operating system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on a Mac to show you how it works. I'm gonna to go to Network Preferences, click New, and it'll be a VPN. And for VPN type, L2TP over IPsec, click Create. And now I'm going to go ahead and set, select the configuration. I'll add a configuration. And so the server address, that's going to be that address we set up. So that's going to be spacerex.myazusstore.com. So that's what you will use, and it might not work on your home network depending on if you've got NAT lookback turned on. So I'm actually not going to use this. I'm actually going to delete this and use the IP address of it. And for account name, whatever the account you've enabled in, and then for authentication settings, we're going to choose a pre-shared key for machine authentication. And so that was SpaceRex for me, but it should be whatever you have for you. and the ASUS store username and password. 
And that's it. Now we should just be able to click apply, connect. And so if you see connected, that means it's all worked. We can go in now, and if we go into the VPN server, we'll see right here that I have connected, and you can even kick me off with using this disconnect button. But that's all there is to it. Now you can securely connect back to this remote network, and it will just work, and you'll have access to all the assets behind there. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect, and that's really all there is to it. All right, that's gonna be it for this one. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.